Get order in the room, please, and uh, turn it over to Chairman Reinders. Thank, thank you. And our first uh, first bill we're going to hear is which one? Stockbridge. 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 Um. House Bill 639 in front of full committee. All right. Yes. Go ahead, uh, Representative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, bring before you uh, uh, House Bill 639, which is the uh, incorporation bill to form the new city of Eagles Landing. Um, this bill meets the technical every technical requirement that is required by this committee to form a, a new city, um, and it just passed uh, out of the subcommittee. And I would appreciate your favorable consideration for this legislation. Uh, thank you for that for that presentation. I'm going to ask you a couple questions because we have changed the rules of interest and transparency. Is there anything that prohibits this particular piece of legislation in the city from being able to add additional services as it deems necessary in the future? No. Is it your plan on having a, a plan of action to be able to inform its citizens when they vote of what they can expect out of the service, what kind of service, and when it should be implemented? Yes, sir. All right. Now, I want to say something to the committee. Y'all, this is, this is a little different. I take exception to words like illegal and this and that, some of the rhetoric that I've heard. I have given my commitment going back to the summer with Tom Gale and the Municipal Association to have discussions as we move forward. We don't want to see this thing just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. There needs to be a system of checks and balances. But to be fair, intellectually fair, there's something wrong with saying that we want the people here to be able to impose their will on the people here. But by the way, when it comes to annexing into a city, we don't want the rest of those people to have an input from the county. Y'all follow that? That's inconsistence for the, for, and I'm not saying the Municipal Association position, but to sit there and say these people should be able to vote on what these people have to do, but we don't want these people to have, be able to vote on what these people get to do is an intellectually inconsistent argument. And with that, I'll entertain a motion. Okay. Got to do pass. Second. Questions? Yeah, I have questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you, we have some new folks who just come to the committee. Can you go over a little bit of why you're asking for this new city? Because we have a group of citizens that have felt disenfranchised from the current <laughs> representation and they have followed every requirement that is, that is required of them to form their city. And I think it's up to us as a body to let those voices be heard. And we're just asking for them to, they, they want to be able to vote on their future. Can you elaborate on disenfranchised? Further, further question? Yes. Okay. Yes, That's okay. The question. You would have to, you would have to. Because we have new people that have come into the committee, so I'd like for them to hear more of what you talked about before we got here. Well, obviously, for, the, for a group of citizens, taxpayers, to come forward with this um, legislation, to pre they came to us to form the city because that's what they felt like was in the best interest of their future and, and having self-governance. And, and when they brought that information to us, as representatives, that's, that's what our job is. And, and I feel like we, we, they deserve the right to vote on this measure. Thank you. Anybody that is from the Stockbridge, Eagles, thank you for that. And, and, and I get it because I know when the full committee was coming. If any of y'all are unfamiliar with this particular subject and want to sign up, we'll make sure that we get you the information out there so you can be fully informed instead of just doing the injustice of you showing up right now and having to give you a 30-second answer because we certainly want the people informed. Would that be right. so anybody's new who had never heard of this issue before? Okay. Question on the floor, on the table. Motion do pass, and uh, we got a second. All those in favor, signify, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Ayes no. clearly have it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, committee. No.
We don't clap and moan and groan. And <laughs> We brought Chairman Stevens. Yeah, he said we did it full. No, no, no. No, we did, we did that sub. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Thank you so much. Yes. All right, and do we have Representative Rick Williams here? All right, then we, we're waiting on Chairman McCall, who should be here in a, in a moment. And we've got uh, Representative Rick Williams is notified as well. If y'all want, just. Yeah, yeah, thank you. What, what's that number? <coughs> now in front of full committee is the um, House Bill 907, Representative Fleming. Please present. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Of course, this is the bill that we just talked about in subcommittee and passed it to full committee. Um, <coughs> House Bill 907 basically fixes what I think is uh, an inconsistency in our election laws when it comes to how we treat judges and district attorneys. If you're a judge and you have to fill uh, an unexpired term because you were appointed to that position by the governor, once you face the voters in November, you get a four-year term, which is how it should be. You should have to face the voters before you get a full four-year term. That is not always the case with our district attorneys. There are actually are circumstances where they could face the voters in November and only get a two-year term. This would simply change the law to make how we treat judges and how we treat district attorneys consistent. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that I have. Any uh, questions for Representative Fleming? Yes, Representative Price. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Just buzz, that's fine. Thank you, Representative Brockway. <laughs> uh, just curious to ask the, uh, the author of this bill if when such person then faces the voters, will they have an I behind their name? Uh, if the current law says so, they will, yes. If it doesn't, they won't. But I think current law says yes. And this bill wouldn't change that part of the law. It's such appropriate point. Would you consider a friendly amendment? It, if it was a friendly amendment, I would. I don't know if that's a friendly amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how it's worded. We'll, well there's a separate House bill out there that does that. I would much rather that bill travel in its own merit than, than kind of mudding up what is probably something pretty simple. Please. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Other questions uh, from from the committee members? Appropriate time. I'd like to make a motion. Yep. Uh, there's no other questions, so this is the appropriate time. Representative Taylor. Move to pass. Second. A motion to second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, it's clear to have it. Thank you. All right, Chairman Rinders. Yeah, we're going to take, um, we're waiting on Chairman McCall. And he's, is he here yet? Okay. And uh, one other, so if you want, y'all, just stretch your legs, get your glass of water, and we're going to sit and recess for just a few minutes. He's, we've, got notif we've notified him he's on his way. Thank you.
going to call back into order and uh, House Bill 814, Representative Rick Williams had to go do some heavy lifting elsewhere. So uh, thank you so much for being back and present the, your bill in front of full committee for us, sir. Okay, I guess uh, Representative Andy Welch had left. He and I um, had talked about this bill, and it is our understanding that um, the counties of 35,000 and less, it does not affect their corners, but this is, um, lets the counties of 35,000 or more negotiate with the corners their salaries and it cl just clears up a lot of the misunderstanding of the uh, of the coroner's salaries. I, I normally don't um, take testimony, as you know, during uh, full committee, but Todd, given, if you would be kind enough, um, Chairman Welch has been working on this issue for some time and had another appointment, and, and just for the benefit of the full committee, if you can, kind of talk about the pros and cons of this, then I'd appreciate it. Sure, sure, I know that kind of caught you cold. <clears throat> um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm Todd Edwards with the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia. Um, I think the, the best way to reference this is uh, to look, what I believe, put in your salaries are what we do as ACCG every year. We type up salary guides so our county commissioners or those elected accountable for governing the, the budgets at the local level on how they calculate corner salaries. Just one glimpse at that will tell you how confusing it might be. What this bill would do, uh, there are currently three options in state law. One is for this, the county is under 34999 those minimal salaries at the bottom. Those would stay in place. Uh, second, this, all the salaries could be governed for both uh, corners and deputy corners uh, by local acts or uh, local law. Uh, third, you could go by what's confusing in here. This allows one option, a final one, for those over 35000 for the county commissioners, the governing authority, those in charge of the budget, to work with the corners in establishing a local uh, salary and simplify this entire process. I did that as short as I could, Mr. Chairman. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Yes, sir. Uh, any questions from members of the committee? All right, then what is the pleasure of the full committee? Got a motion and a second to pass. Any discussion? Thank you. Any long discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, like sign. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now you're going to go to the full, full, full committee. <laughs> you're, no, you're good. You're, you're good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We learn how to work rules now. All right, we've been waiting on the chairman of ag, Chairman McCall, on House Bill 489. We're still kind of waiting, but uh, given his intellectual capabilities, we're going to let uh, Representative Brockway, who heard it in sub, present House Bill 489. Representative Brockway. Great. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, uh, yeah, we've got a, an amendment which uh, will be passed to you. Uh, to this bill to rep to reflect something that Chairman McCall a change that Chairman McCall wanted made uh, to the com uh, to the bill. So essentially, what this bill is trying to do there's uh, there's some confusion about uh, where local governments need to advertise various bids, and so this uh, <coughs> uh, attempts to clarify that and say that the first uh, the first place that a a bid is placed is in the Georgia Procurement Registry. Uh, local local governments would still have the option to publish them in their legal organ or publish them online on their website or other other things, but the idea would be that uh, the first place would be that it would be published would be in the Georgia Pro Pro Procurement. Easy for me to say Georgia Procurement Registry, uh, 
and uh, that that would be the default that people would look to. And, uh, and from, from what I understand, that is people who are seeking these sorts of bid, bids, that's where they go anyway. So those folks are, will, uh, <coughs> will go there uh, now by default. And then, of course, local governments, as I mentioned, have the option to look in these other places where they might be publish them in other places. We, we did have an amendment. The intent of, of the amendment that we considered in subcommittee was to uh, make it a, uh, a, a may do this instead of a shall do this. Uh, and on the advice of the Legislative Council, we had a, a, uh, a, a, um, an amendment offered by Chairman McCall. Uh, once Mr. Lanier took a look at it, he massaged that and uh, made it uh, better, which is what we have in in the copied piece of paper uh, here before you. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, that's that's the bill, and I'll I'll do my best to answer any questions or discuss the the amendment as as needed. Any questions from members of the committee, Representative Fleming? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Oh Chairman. Boy. Can you get the Ledge Council to explain to us what the amendment does. That's the amendment. The, yes, ma'am. The amendment, uh, Chairman McCall's amendment, what he wanted to do was the bill is presented on its face with three options, and right now they're in mandatory. It would require you to advertise in all three places, Human Registry, the legal organ, and other things such as the website. What the intent of the amendment was to do was to require the Georgia Procurement Registry be the the one you have to do, but give you the option of also doing it in the legal <coughs> or the website or other similar entities. And the way the it was put together was not quite didn't quite get there. So what we did was make the amendment come in and say that uh, you shall advertise it in Georgia Procurement Registry at no cost to the local government entity. And then after that may also be advertised in the legal organ or other media such as the website. It's, it's really designed to do the same thing as that we talked about. It just does it in a manner that makes it make a little bit more sense. And, and if, I, if I may, Mr. Chairman, um, Legislative Council, I, uh, you, you can ask this. What is the current law as respect to this? Uh, we, we, what, uh, what Chairman McCall uh, explained to me was uh, it's it's confusing, uh, and so which is why he's, he's brought this bill forward to try to bring some clarity to it. There's some discussion that it must be in the legal organ. Some that it you know maybe there was a newer law passed that said it should be published on the website. Uh, but it, that's what he's attempting to do is bring clarity to that with the Georgia. Uh, I get the <coughs> the term right. The the registry being the default. Okay, so, so Rep Representative Fleming, I'm going to yeah. see if uh, Todd. From ACCG can help give a little bit more Thank context you very much. here. Yes, I should have recognized him out there. You're right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. The current uh, requirement this is somewhat different than other uh, legal notice requirement mandates in state law. It would give us the option to uh, currently uh, either post it on our website or in the legal organ without the Georgia Procurement Registry weighing in on that. Well, th it begins with on line 16 each bid opportunity. Now, is a bid opportunity when you are going to bid, or is a bid opportunity when you could go to bid? One moment, please. Uh, I'm not looking at, at, at the same version you're looking at. I, I <coughs> can't answer that. <coughs> She'll give you a copy of it. Yeah. Looking at line, line 16 of uh, LC 345080. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I may not be able to answer it, but I'll give it a shot, Mr. Mr. Uh, Representative Fleming. What a state your inquiry. What bills are we talking about? What what numbers? Are House Bill eight four eighty nine. And it's five zero eight zero, and there's not any other version other than five zero eight zero. That's correct. Right. And there was an amendment made in the sub, and we're trying to because I guess it was needed a little bit more tightening up. We're trying to make the appropriate amendment to, to do the tightening up. Well, this but was. Go ahead. My question is, is I think the same one as yours. I want to know, 
are, if we're removing the mandate to do a publication by a legal organ, I'd like to know that. There is no mandate in this code section for public works projects valued at over $10,000. Throughout most of the code there is, so that is not a mandate here. Currently it's a choice between either the, uh, the legal organ or our website. How long has the procurement registry existed? I didn't know it existed. As long as I can remember. They've been around. And in subcommittee, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Please continue. Did anybody oppose this, like the newspaper people? They usually come in and oppose elimination of uh, No, there, there was no opposition to this in, in, uh, in subcommittee. Uh-huh. I'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking out loud. Just talking out loud. Chairman McCall, welcome. Yes, welcome. 489. Am I supposed to be talking? 489. <laughs> Trying to help. Thank you. It's, it's not so we're I guess, Mr. Chairman, if you might, we're, we I've presented the bill as best I could, and we you did, did have fine, some. I'm sure. We did me, uh, <laughs> we did have some questions, so okay, whatever. Uh, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chairman McCall, if I may, I was I was asking the question. I was trying to figure out what current law was, and how we're changing it. The, the information I have uh, is that sometimes when a local government or something may advertise on their website and somebody's buddy bids on it, then it gets pulled down and you only get one bid. This would make it statewide where multiple people could make a bid on an on a, uh, on a issue that uh, is taking tax money. To uh, to do whatever the project may be uh, for that particular time and place and whatever they're building. So you're trying to expand the accessibility yes. of these codes. Okay, I'm fine yes. with that. But here's my question for you on line 16. It says each bid opportunity. Those first three words, each bid opportunity. Does that mean when you decide to go to bid, or each time you could go to bid, you have to do this? I don't know the answer to that. You see why that's gonna, very I'm important. not going to sit here and try to make up something. You see why so, that's a very important yeah, distinction? Yeah. Because we, we could be mandating something that does not exist in current law if you interpret each bid opportunity to say any time you could bid, you have to go to bid and do this. And I say that because, as you know, there are a lot of small contracts out there that you don't always go to bid, particularly with services. You know, you, right. you can get the lowest bidder of an accountant, for example. And, and you, may be, you, you may be bankrupt by the end of the year because they're not very good at what they do. Or you can get an architect. You, or you can get an architect that's real cheap and then the building falls in. So the cheapest services that you may get in a bid process is not always the best services. And that's what I'm trying to distinguish. Are we about to mandate when it says each bid opportunity that you have to go to bid on all kind of stuff that you currently don't because in, in many instances we don't want them to go to bid on services? I don't particularly think this makes you take the lowest bid it just puts it out there to give the opportunity for more well there, there are to other bid. there are other bid laws on bidding that if you do go to bid you do have to take the lowest bid if it is if it meets the certain qualifications and, of, and i know there's state law that requires that for state institution and and that gets into pr what the definition of cost and price is but you see if each bid opportunity means whenever you can bid you have to bid we're about to make a big change if it means only when you do bid, then, then that, that's different. <coughs> Chairman McCall, I actually think if, if I were to read this and I didn't know anything, and I see each bid, I'd sit there every time a bid's open, i got to do this. Or every time I get ready to each, every, not some. Um, it, it, I, I just There's a part of me that goes, we're parsing words here, and I'm going to leave it to great minds like y'all. But... Representative Fleming, do you see a fix here that accomplishes what the chairman would like? And I'm open to whatever, you know this. And wh while you're thinking about that, Tom in the back with the Municipal Association, does, they, does each, could that be problematic if misinterpreted? Or we don't show legislative intent would be a better way for us to put it. Mr. Chairman, I, I think Re Representative Fleming brings up Representative, I'm Tom Gale with the Georgia Municipal Association, and uh, Representative Fleming brings up uh, something that I hadn't even contemplated, but um, many of our 
cities belong to different purchasing arrangements uh, such as the U.S. Communities Program that's run through the National League of Cities, which has uh, very low purchase prices for goods and services particularly. Um, we also have uh, different uh, arrangements with companies, Georgia-based companies like Home Depot, which offer discounted goods and services purchases. So many of those, those uh, uh, purchases now are, are done at a very uh, good rate for the taxpayers of those municipalities. And, and Representative Flippy brings up a good point that, that we may inadvertently be, be um, uh, interfering with those arrangements. So, um, so that, is, that is a good point. I needed to do some right. further research. Uh, the chair is gonna take a little leeway here and ask, um, uh, you did such a wonderful job of explaining that, by the way. <laughs> But, but, but sincerely, I think the posture we need to probably be in here is to see if we can work some kind of arrangement out. What that leaves us to have to look at is your other bill, 810, if we're going to let y'all work that out and come back to it because we haven't taken, we're not in a, in a particular posture on the, uh, on the other one. Can you do that while Barry looks at a potential remedy yeah. for that solution? Yeah. Chairman McCall? That's fine. We can come back and do this. Okay. Let's let's go then to uh, House Bill 810. Okay. And give us an explanation long enough to, for Barry to get done. All right. House Bill 810 uh, was brought to me by my local guy on the WIOA. And all it says is that on some questions when a WIOA has to meet, that, that uh, it can be done over the telephone. Uh, an example I gave a subcommittee was my guy has to ride 50 miles to Athens to have a two-minute meeting, and he has to ride 50 miles home. Uh, a lot of the problem on the WLAs, and this is only dealing with that, no, no, other, no other people, uh, is they can't get a quorum, and they can get a quorum over the phone. So this just allows some of the meetings that they have that, that's not – of any particular uh, importance. It may be just a question that, that they have to approve to be able to do it over the phone. To, uh, to, and it'll, it'll help them get a quorum. And it's that way all over the state, not just, not just in the Athens area. But that was just an example of how far people have to go uh, when you get out in the country to, uh, to a meeting. Uh, and I would say that it's probably that way in Atlanta, except they're not 50 miles, they might be an hour to go two miles because of traffic. So uh, that's that's where this came from. It's Please. just it's just giving the WIOA an opportunity to get a quorum on a on a question that they may need to pass. Yes, uh, you know when when they can't get people to show up. Great, Representative Oliver. I don't know the answer to this question, but maybe others do. Are there any other local entities that are excused from open meeting requirements under uh, open meeting requirements? I mean, this the exception to allowing teleconferences is only for statewide. Would this be the first time that a local entity is excused from a local from open records mandate? I didn't see this as an exception to the open meetings law. It's just saying what constitutes a quorum, right? Maybe I read or it. how they can no, get to the core. If, if I'm looking at 0047S, it says the, the existing law is any agency with statewide jurisdiction shall be authorized to conduct meetings by teleconference. And then the new language, 14 to 18, is about this particular local entity. I know with the exception that it currently allows a local government to have somebody join by a telephone, it says that everybody else has to be there. You gotta have a quorum present, uh, if I understand it correctly, in a location where the public can attend. In other words, you can't have five different <coughs> phones and there's not really a meeting place. Now, I haven't read this old code section, but if we're not changing that requirement, we're probably not changing it here. So there is a, there is a local opportunity for teleconferencing, telephone participation under open record, open meetings under 
the requirement you, that everybody that they have already had a quorum. You, you got to have a doctor's excuse on one time, and you got two other free free passes to, to join by teleconference. So if so I don't think I don't think we're changing the law. We're just expanding who can utilize the teleconference proceeding. That's what it sounds like to me, Representative Oliver. But I hadn't hadn't looked at the whole. Under program. existing law, the local workforce development board in your position could already meet by teleconference if there was a quorum present in Athens, and the only only guy missing was Albert. That's what you think the current law is. That's what I think it is for local governments now. An appointed authority, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, could I get Mr. Haggard to speak? Absolutely. Sure. Mr. Chairman, uh, Scott Haggard, I'm uh, on behalf of the Atlanta Workforce Development Board. Uh, we worked with uh, Chairman McCall on this legislation. Appreciate him bringing it. Um, <clears throat> the intent certainly is, is as Chairman McCall said, uh, the Atlanta board, in addition to other workforce development boards, do have difficulty, uh, I think, getting a quorum. Uh, and so the intent was to try to allow uh, that to happen, you know, using, uh, using a teleconference. So that was really the effort. I don't know the answer to your specific question, um, mm -hmm. but it sounds like Representative Fleming has some, has some insight on that. Um, the workforce development boards, as you know, are all appointed, so none of, they don't include any elected officials uh, on them allow the Workforce Development Board to do this. I'm just trying to figure out if it's consistent or not consistent with other local entity boards, mm -hmm. like the City of Decatur, for instance. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the answer to that question specifically. that already exists with any statewide jurisdictional committee and we're simply expanding it to the definition there so we're not going to change what the minimum they have to meet or do we're just simply saying more people can fall under this exception. All right, all right I'm going to I'm going to get in here because we got a couple lawyers going at it I'm going to defer to ours. Jeff? I'm going to apologize Mr. Chairman I've been working on the previous bill and I've not Okay that's fine that's fine that, that, that's fine Representative uh, Chairman Taylor. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a few concerns about it, particularly with workforce. They are, they have been, at least the one in my district, has been run very loosely. And documentation has been scattered at best. And I'm wondering if this is going to make that even worse with not having a central location with people meeting. And, and I get a lot of these folks are private citizens and they're participating on a board. But it just seems like there's going to be even less control and knowledge and follow through. So this, this is a concern that I have. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, Chairman McCall, I'll let yeah. Tim speak well, to that. Well, I, I don't think Chairman McCall can speak on the workforce development of South right. Georgia, but you can speak overall about any potential <clears throat> remedies or why that happens overall or, or suggested fixes or whatever she feels is an appropriate question. Certainly. Thank you, Chairman. I know in the Atlanta, for the Atlanta Region Workforce Board, for instance, we, we have also had difficulty getting a quorum. So I certainly understand your concern that it might uh, cause, you know, additional, um, uh, you know, less coordination maybe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in some ways I think, uh, I think the ability to have a quorum and, and make decisions even using this method uh, might enhance coordination simply because you'd have more, you know, more of an opportunity for decisions to be made. Uh, when when votes need to come up, um, I'm not sure exactly how to address that because I don't know the specific yeah. concerns you have with your board. I, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I answer? Let, let, yeah. let me. There's a part of me that sits there and says, "Now you got my wheel spinning." If we've got some boards that are sitting there and, and saying, "You know, well, we're having trouble meeting a quorum," and our fix is, "Well, then don't show up and just get on the phone." I'm not so sure that the two most dead, how many are on a, on a board? Our, uh, the Atlanta Region Workforce Board is, I don't know the exact number, it's okay. right around 30, but it represents seven different counties. Do you have any idea in your neck of the woods? At least 15 are on because the board, Because there's a I part believe. of me that sits there and goes, if you let them say, don't worry about it, you never have to show up, just show up by phone every now and then, that the six may actually be dictating to the rest, unlike the committee process up here. And, and I don't know if that if that's good if we're having trouble meeting quorums anyway. Chairman McCall. The one 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 thing I said when they brought this to me, and, and wanted me to do it was that uh, 
you can't have every meeting over the telephone. Oh, yeah. And if it's a major issue that you're trying to address, then they need to show up. But if it's just a small question that, that might take two minutes when they get to a meeting to handle, then why not just let them call in and, and, and do it on a conference call? And I, I don't know what, I hate a conference call worse than anybody here. But I guess they can be recorded and, and entered as a matter of record into whatever the meeting you know, was about as far as you, you worried about it being run loosely and there's no checks and balances on it. Uh, but I did say it when they asked me about this, I said, now there's gonna be people that, that question whether you're gonna do all of your meetings over the telephone or a warm body has to show up. And uh, you know that was what I asked them when they brought this, and they said, oh, no, we don't want to do it that way with all of them on the phone. It's just more of a... Right, thank you. Identify yourself and briefly give your thoughts. Yes, I'm Amy Lancaster. I'm Director of Workforce Development at the Metro Atlanta Chamber, and I also serve on WorkSource Atlanta's um, Workforce Board. And to your comment, one of the changes with WIOA is that there's a minimum or a... 50% of the board has to be from the business side, from industry. And so as we try to engage those members, scheduling becomes a nightmare. So yes, getting a quorum, but those are also the members that will are more willing to do it by phone, that keep the process going and put that business side into the conversation to, to talk about, okay, what are the outcomes and making sure that things are still driven by industry, not so much as driven by the, the job seeker element of it. So I think this would actually be hugely beneficial just based on my experience on the WorkSource Atlanta board and knowing the engagement of those businesses that are, are there, um, but the challenges we have in scheduling and, and making them present. And the other question comes in too. So some of the attendance piece is already part of the requirements of the workforce boards already so in order to maintain. I so. The, the so, other question comes in when you uh, have. Uh, 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 just a second, I, I didn't get a response to my point. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm just, you, uh, well, my, so my question, my statement was. Yeah, I'm. I'm fine if transparency. Everybody says is all we're good. already doing yeah. it. We're already doing it. I don't want. I've seen this movie. I don't want someone going out going. If you'll join our board, don't worry. Don't worry about the scheduling. You can call. Y'all may not do that, but you couldn't speak for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so, if there was a system of checks and balances, because that was your concern. And I don't know how to figure out what that system of checks and balances would be other than y'all have to expose it more than just internally. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I mean, do you know the, the person? Could you tell us the name? And don't answer this. Since you got 30 on your board, could you off the top of your head give us the top two or three? Probably misses more times in a meeting than anybody else. No, because I don't see them. So, I mean, mm. we like, no, 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 no. Well, I'm you there have the oversight over them. No, no, no. I'm there in person and I see the people who regularly attend, right? So, so you wouldn't thinking, see the ones who don't regularly attend. Right. The other thing we need to think about, Mr. Chairman, if you let me, is, is these are all volunteers. The point that they have to leave their business. I get it. And, and go to a two-minute meeting. I'm trying to split the baby hours. between leaving their business and you saying I don't want you to do all the business over the phone. Right. I thought that's right. the path you were going down originally. It, it, it is, and I, I so don't want to them to that. do it all over the phone, but, you know, they need to leave their business and come to some. But uh, I have no idea. All right, any other questions? Representative Taylor. Are they compensated, and would they receive payment? There's Not, no. no. All right. No further questions. What is the will of the committee? Do pass. Got a motion to pass. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. The ayes clearly have it. Congratulations. Now, Thank we you. were trying to fix what, Barry? 
If we need to, uh, do we need to come back? Was it 849? No, it was 489. Please. Mr. Chairman, I just handed uh, uh, an amended version of the bill to Chairman McCall, and um, and it was what Ledge Council and I worked on, and I will read it to the committee, and you can follow with your pen and see how this change would, would, would work. It, 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 it tends to not create the unintended circumstances that we talked about earlier of requiring something in mass that's not currently in the law, but if on line 16, <clears throat> the first thing you do is you take your pen and you strike through the first three words, each bid opportunity, and then you right above that replace it with these words, if a bid is extended by. Then if you will, after you do that, if you'll go down to line 17 and you go over to, through that sentence, to you get to the word each, if you strike the word each, then you skip bid, but you then strike the word opportunity. So you've stricken two words, the word each and the word opportunity. In the place of each, you put the word if a, two words, if a. And then in the place of opportunity, you uh, put the words is extended. And of course, I'll read all this, Mr. Chairman, when we get through. But on line 18 now, after the word more, if you put a comma and add these three words, such bid opportunity, then here's how the whole thing would read. Start with line 16. Okay. After the word more on 18. Yeah, put a comma. That's right. So here's how it would read in total. If a bid is extended by a county, municipal corporation, or a local board of education for goods and services valued at $10,000 or more, and if a bid is extended for public works construction valued at $100,000 or more, comma, such bid opportunities shall be advertised by such respective local government entity in the, and then you pick up that handwritten amendment that Ledge Council gave out. Y'all right. see why I farm for a living instead of lawyer for a living? I've got a question for, yes sir, I've got a question for Tom from GMA, can you? This may just be a clarification. I've got a concern, we just rolled out this tr regional transit thing yesterday. Um, a lot of those uh, vehicles were purchased through DOAS, or DOA, uh, yeah, Department of Administrative Services, under blanket purchase agreements. Um, how would this affect, or would it affect any of that? Because I'm, I've got kind of, I don't know whether it would or not, but I've got kind of a concern. Um, on that particular issue. Honest, honestly, I'm not chairman. quite sure I understand. I think I understand this question. Okay. You, what you're talking about is the state purchasing plan, yeah. and where the state goes out and bids and for the, the state and local government. Sort of like you a GSA can buy, sort of like you a can buy, schedule, yeah. You can buy an F-150 for this price. Yeah. That's not a bid. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a purchase to a purchasing plan, so you don't trigger this code oh. section by the didn't added language. Good question. Sure, that yeah, that, that. That's similar to the concern that with the U.S. Communities Program or Home Depot Program or a state purchasing program, I think that's covered. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just still want to clarify that there will be an opportunity that's mandated such that somebody at the local level does not have to go to the Georgia Procurement Registry only. That's correct. Yes, the, according to the author. The 
two little line amendments that I wrote that was adopted in subcommittee. When Jeff got through lawyering it up, it turned into a paragraph. But I'm, it says the same thing. I'm looking at that, but it, it, because that word may is concerning me. On what line? What? The handwritten line four. <clears throat> They, they, they can do either. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right. At the local level, people are used to either, one, looking at the website, two, looking at the local organ. And that's okay. Right, but we're not mandating either one. We're mandating the state. Uh, right, I'm saying at the local level, that's going to be new for them. You're talking about as far as a local organ right. or, or whatever the local website is? Right. I think I think Representative Oliver was also asking the same question. Is 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 the newspaper now no longer required? Correct. The 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 government agency is no longer required. They can. They just aren't required. Why would they if they didn't have to? The the other question there am I, am is I they missing can something? They can make the decision of whether they want to spend the money in a ad in a local organ, thinking that they might get a better uh, field to choose from. You understand what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> yeah, Scott's correct. Barry, you, you, who's making? I get you. I get you. We have a who's going to offer your amendment? Buzz has got it. So does Chairman and Okay, okay. you good. All right. Let me. We're going to look at. We're going to look at the posture. We've got a committee substitute from the subcommittee that was approved. So the posture is is that we're going to vote on that, and then at the appropriate time take the amendment to the committee substitute, which then creates a new committee substitute to the committee substitute in the subcommittee. <laughs> Betty? Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I need a motion to accept the committee substitute. Second, we've got a first and a second. Any amendments to the committee substitute? Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd like to offer uh, the two amendments, the amendment that was suggested by the Legislative Council that we have handwritten here, and then the amendment that Representative Fleming offered. I would like to offer those as amendments. All right, we've got an amendment to the committee substitute uh, moved. Do we have a second? Second. All right, all in favor of the two amendments to the committee substitute out of the subcommittee signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, now our posture is, is that we've got a new committee substitute to the committee substitute in the subcommittee. What is the pleasure of the committee? Got a motion to do pass and have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the committee substitute to the subcommittee substitute in full committee, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? Congratulations. Believe it or not, I followed all that. <laughs> <laughs>